Hello and welcome to Spectrum Today. I'm Brenton, glad to have you with us on the program. Hey, we've got two great interviews coming up. First of all, we're gonna start off with Diana Delgado, who is with the City of Albuquerque's Department of Arts and Culture. She is, in fact, the Community Outreach Coordinator. Gonna be talking about some great things in that area. And then also a local business, as we talk to the folks at Rio Grande Wholesale and Retail, we're glad to have with us uh, Annie Johnson and a local artist. Don't miss out on what's coming up today. privilege to have with us today Diana Delgado who is the community outreach coordinator for the city of Albuquerque's Department of Arts and Culture. Diana, I think this is the first time we've had the privilege of having you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is my first time and I am so excited to be here. Well, we're looking forward to learning a little bit today about the Department of Arts and Culture and, and specifically some things that you're working on with our youth, but I think it would be a great place to start today to simply ask you, where, what are, how did you get involved in the city's uh, Department of Arts and Culture? Give us a little background. For sure. So the Department of Arts and Culture, I will say, is arguably one of the most fun departments in our city. We oversee two museums, theaters, Which special theaters? events. Which uh, theaters? And okay, museums yeah. do you oversee? So I'll, go, I'll give you the whole spiel here. All right. So the Department of Arts and Culture, we oversee the international, the Anderson Abruzzo International Balloon Museum, Wonderful. the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History, we do the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund and our entire public art department for our city. We're also the Biopark, which of course is our zoo, aquarium, botanic gardens, and Tingley Beach. We also have our own um, government, One Albuquerque Media, so it's government and public access channels that we oversee at the city. And then our special community events, which is our summer fests that happen, mm -hmm. Twinkle Light Parade, and also manages our two full-size theaters that the city manages, South Broadway, and of course, our iconic chemo. Yes, that's a lot, and a lot of things that probably a lot of our viewers are familiar with. Yeah. And I was thinking of the list you were Reading, you think of the bioparks, the Twinkle Light Parade, and so many other things you mentioned. Also, the 19 libraries. I can't forget about oh, don't them. Don't forget They're the pretty, libraries. That's a pretty big that's thing. That's a big deal. <laughs> There's okay. 19 of them. <laughs> so you got involved with this when, and, and what, how does how has it begun to progress for you since you're. Uh, beginnings with the city of Albuquerque. Awesome. So yeah, I've been working with the city for about five years now, maybe just over five years. And I got brought on uh, when Mayor Keller was first elected. He was looking for somebody to kind of help with community engagement and community outreach with Albuquerque's creative sector. Okay. And so our department, as I just said, is like huge and broad and covers everything from amphibians to artists. Um, my, my background's primarily in art. So before working at the city, I had always worked a lot very closely with many different Albuquerque based arts nonprofits. And so from just spending about a decade working in that sector, I had already kind of a lot of deep community relationships. And so just trying to bring those relationships to City Hall and tighten the way that we can all collaborate together. Wonderful. Now I understand that today we're going to get to talk a little bit about some things that are happening for our youth and there's something called the Mayor's Creative Youth Corps. I think you're even wearing the the, the uh, t-shirt that that proves that we have one of those, right? So yes. tell us about this uh, this creative art core that's that the mayor has put into motion. Of course. So this is absolutely my passion project at the city and I am so honored that I get to be a part of it every summer. So the Mayor's Creative Youth Corps started as a reimagining of a program that was formerly known as the Mayor's Summer Art Institute. Okay. And that was really awesome, but it was primarily focused in one art medium, like doing mosaic work. So the beautiful mosaics that we have along the sides of um, like downtown city hall and the convention center right. that was done through that program okay so when we started to kind of reimagine like how can we broaden this and deepen this for young people who are interested in pursuing careers professional careers in the arts 
but that maybe don't want to make mosaics. Maybe they're flamenco dancers, or maybe they're circus artists, or musicians, or watercolor artists. So we reimagined that program to what is the Mayor's Creative Youth Corps. And so what that is, is it's a two months long, pre-professional, paid summer mentorship program, okay. where we place young people with what we call host sites within the city doing a variety of different tasks. When you mentioned it's two months long, and I'm, I'm guessing that it might be in the summertime because that's when a lot of the younger people mm -hmm. are out of school. But I mean, you clarify when is it? When does it happen? The Mayor's Creative Youth Corps runs from June and July, so right. it is in that summer because this is for high school aged young people okay. specifically. So well, we can't that. do it when they're in school. It's a little unfair. <laughs> right. So this is basically for teenagers then. So kids that are in ninth to twelfth grade, or does it reach down into middle schools, or really? Where we're actually encompass? looking, so for this summer specifically, we're looking for 20 to 24 young people who will be entering their junior year, okay. senior year, or are going to be graduating from high school this spring. So it's those high school upperclassmen and then young people after they graduate kind of interested in, you know, just exploring some career pathways. You mentioned that this is a paid mentorship. So this isn't something that they do all summer for free. They're doing it in conjunction, do they have to have a certain background? Do they have to have already been you know, admitted to arts college or Absolutely anything like that? Absolutely not. What we're looking for is just for young people who are interested in exploring what it really means to work in the creative sector. So a lot of young people love theater, right? I, sure. I did theater in high school. And so you, you might think, well, what can I do with a degree in theater or with a background in theater? It's like Broadway, LA, movies, like, but what else is there? And there's just, so many theater companies in New Mexico, and a lot of them are nonprofits. Some of them are professional union houses. And the way you manage a nonprofit theater versus a professional commercial theater like the Chemo or a professional union house theater, they're all very different. But there's so many opportunities within that. Okay, so it exposes young people to to the different things that are going to be important as they think about a career path. It sounds like absolutely, and it gives them some exposure now. As they begin this uh, mentorship and this, this, this program, what's one of the things that you like to see happen for those kids? What, what's your goal for those 20 to 24 young people? Something that I always enjoy getting to see is when the young people all bond and really do form their true cohort and like just seeing that relationship building happen. Mm -hmm. As I said, relationships are a big important thing for me that I really value. And so just seeing them all enter their very first meeting where they're teenagers, Right. And so teenagers, yeah, a little shy, a little awkward. And then just over the course of those first few days, just watching them bond as an entire cohort is really, really magic for me and amazing. Do they work together or do they work individually? They How do, does that play it, out? Yes, and. So they get to work together on many projects, like as the whole cohort of 20 to 24. And then they're also placed with a specific host site, depending on what their areas of interest are and what the host site's needs are. So okay. for example, if you're a young person and you're really interested in starting a band, okay. right? Let's just say that, that you like- That makes sense for like, a teenager. Yeah, like the loud noises, don't mind working on Friday and Saturday nights, because let's be real, that's when you know spaces that have concerts tend to happen. That or like early morning at like the Old Town Plaza. Um, so we'll try to place those young people with organizations that are going to be working with musicians, Makes that are going sense. to be putting on concerts, working gigs where they have to manage sound levels. So we try to match them to what, they, what they're interested in exploring. Well, who can apply for this? Do you have to be a resident of the city of Albuquerque? You live in the, the county of Bernalillo? I mean, what, what's, what's yeah, the parameter? Yeah, just greater, greater Albuquerque area. So Bernalillo County for sure counts. And we do have young people who live in Albuquerque but attend school in Santa Fe, for example. Absolutely allowed. We just ask that they're Albuquerque-based. So it can't be the other way. You can't live in Santa Fe and apply for this. I got gotcha. you. You have to be based in Albuquerque because, you know, city of Albuquerque. No, it makes so. sense. I mean, it is a City of Albuquerque program. Do, do you have any special, uh, maybe, story that you remember? You say, you know, that one that one event, man, I just always have remembered the fact that how well it went, and I loved it. Okay, so this one, it went very well, but it's also a very, like, chaotic, fun, you know, the humor of life kind of story. Okay. So for last year at the Rail Yards, we were doing, we were, we were, one of the projects we do is work on Mayor Keller's State of the City Address, which is this huge right. event that, like, everybody yeah. at the city has to do. So the Mayor's Creative Youth Corps put together some little art installations that were going up throughout 
the rail yards. Beautiful, iconic building, right? But not very secure windows, right? There's a lot of broken windows, lots of holes through the wall. So we are putting up this, these, this art installations like in various different places. We get done. We're about to leave for the day mm -hmm. and a massive monsoon rolls through. Oh, wow. And so we're all rushing around in the rain, trying to find tarps to cover up all of our artwork. But then everybody else at the city who had set up their tables for like information and packet handing, like all of their paperwork was flying everywhere oh, so no. but it was fun you know we were laughing but and you remember soaking that wet. one that yeah was one that sticks in your mind and it, it was just one of those beautiful uh, albuquerque summer rains and so yeah it was like we had just gotten done we were gonna go home and then now and we're now soaking wet trying to find tarps and like block windows and the beautiful rail yards but a lot of those windows are broken that's so. right that's right <laughs> well tell us if uh, folks would like to find out information where do we, where do they go they can go to find out information about the Mayor's Creative Youth Corps. You can go to cabq.gov slash mcyc. All right, so that URL will be very helpful for you. Our guest today, Diana Delgado, Community Outreach Coordinator for the City of Albuquerque's Department of Arts and Culture. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. certainly appreciate each and every one of you. And I, I mean that genuinely because we are supported through the faithful giving of you, our viewers. You know, this year is the 35th anniversary of Alpha Omega Broadcasting, working right here in the Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Central New Mexico region. Of course, we've expanded our distribution. Where now it's throughout most of New Mexico, up into Southwest Colorado and Northeast Arizona. Thankful for so many viewers, as we are now available to just a little bit shy of two million folks. Isn't that something? What God has done. Now, when you give to the President's Club here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting, that gift of $50, $75, or $100, or it could be a gift of any size. We've had folks give more than that. What a blessing that is. Sometimes folks don't give quite that amount, but they're wanting to get involved as well. That helps with the operational costs, the expansion uh, and addition of uh, equipment, and of course, even the maintenance of those things that are necessary. So you are really making a difference. Others of you give $32 a month to the Family Safe Haven Program, which supports the family entertainment programming. We have a project underway that we will talk more about as we progress through 2023, where we're beginning to work on producing uh, family entertainment programming right here in Albuquerque, and we're so thankful for that. So how can you get involved? How can you become a partner? First of all, uh, go online and be a, one who signs up for the monthly newsletter. You can do that by going to info at kzq32.org. Follow us on, on Facebook, some of those places. That's a lot of fun to kind of keep up. But here's how you can give. You can give online at www.kzq32.org. Go to the donation section, fill that out, and you can give a recurring donation there or a one-time donation. You can also be involved by just simply mailing it in to Alpha Omega Broadcasting, 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, 87109. Some of you might prefer to make your donation via credit card or debit card by just calling us at 505-884-8355. Dial extension 101 would be glad to help you with that donation. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for your support. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We are so pleased to have with us two wonderful friends today, Annie Johnson and Sunshine Reeves. And uh, we're going to be talking about something that probably many of you are really uh, interested and excited yes. about, which is Southwestern jewelry and things of that nature. Uh, Sunshine is a very renowned uh, mm. artist, and we're excited about that. Annie, we welcome you back. It's been a while since you've been with us, but welcome back to Spectrum. Thank you for having me. Well, we're excited to have you. You are with Rio Grande Trading. Yes. Tell us about what's new at Rio Grande Trading. Well, I haven't been here in a few years. It's been a while. Um, now we got new floors, January 2020. Nice. So the store's yeah. looking a lot better. Um, we are getting new inventory in, and we also are working with some wonderful artists like Sunshine Reeves here, and that's why I brought him today, just so we could really talk about what makes Rio Grande Trading what it is, and that's the Native American artists mm -hmm. and the work that they do. 
I think that's great, putting a face with the name of the artist. So we're excited to meet you, Sunshine. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what, what you're involved with and what kind of things do you make, Sunshine? Well, I make anything that, you know, is a challenge to me, like boxes and yo-yos and stuff like that. I can, really? I can make it like canteens and even train sets and tea sets. Is it tea actually sets? out of oh. silver that yes. you make it, or what do you make it's, it out of? It's out of, uh, it's called sterling silver. It's mm -hmm. like 92.5% silver, and the rest is to harden the silver, I guess. The oh. the other stuff, like uh -huh. they add. The supplements? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's it's silver. So, and, I don't know, my specialty is uh, stamping. I love to stamp, you know, these pieces that, like it starts like this yeah. plain silver and then they come out like this with using these now little those are the tools okay, yeah but did you see yeah, they're stamps are, yeah these are my stamps that some i made myself and some are bought from friends and these are lifter rods from from the engine mm -hmm. the lifters oh, oh wow uh -huh. yeah Amazing. these are these are that that um Wow. How long does it, you know, you have a beautiful display, and I'm sure they're showing some of those things uh, on the screen for us. So let's just talk, for example, about one of the beautiful either sterling silver bracelets or the sterling silver with turquoise bracelets. How long does something like that take a person like, like yourself? Wow. First of all, how long have you done it? Have, is this something that you, you've done since you were a young person, or is it something you picked up later in life? How long have you been involved um. in making jewelry? I say about over thirty years. Okay, so that's that's a good part of mm -hmm. your adult life, right. no doubt. How long does it take to to make a ring or to make a bracelet for somebody uh, who knows what they're doing, like you? Well, with a, a skinny bracelet like this, I can probably do one in about I say about two to three hours. Oh wow! That's and amazing that you could do it that quickly. Yeah, because it's you know the stamping. I have it all down. Like, uh -huh. Oh yeah. And I know my stamps, like what to use and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and how to do it. Just like you know, friends ask me like, how fast, how fast can you do this? And it's like, you know, then they try it, and then it's like, man, it's harder than I thought. Oh yeah. You make it look so easy, and it's like to me, it's easy, but to everybody else, you know. You know, some people take a long time just to make one bracelet. Yes. You're quite with, an artist. That's amazing. That's it's a, a, it's yeah. a gift. About with mine, it's like, I, it's just, just come, you know, it's already in here, and all I do is express it out onto the silver. I bet that's kind of therapeutic, too, at times. Or you just, do you just go and you have a concept, and you do it, Has it, does it ever change, or does it, do you stay, like, right on track of what you thought you were going to create? Uh, I, I try to change it. Every now and then, like different things, mm -hmm. it's like these. I was going to ask you about that one because that's shaped differently. Like that's not yeah. a flat piece. So tell us about how you would. How how does that begin? Does that begin as a flat piece of silver like the others, or is it to begin? No, differently? it comes comes in a tri triangle wire. Okay. And it's shaped like a you know like pyramid. A triangle. Uh -huh. Okay. But I have to get a special special stamping block that it fits in there and sits flat. So oh. my friend, my friend and Gallup makes those, mm -hmm. and you know, then these sit flat in there, and then I, that's how I, you know, like, are that's how nice? I get these, these are uh, like at an angle. Those okay. are beautiful. Those are beautiful. Annie, how did how did you come across getting to know about Sunshine? Is, has have you had a long-standing relationship, or is this someone new who works as a vendor there at Rio Grande? Uh, wholesale and, and uh, retail in your trading department? So we've been buying Sunshine's jewelry for the last 20 years, but he has not worked in conjunction with our store until the last year. Wow. I've always known his name, but mm -hmm. um, I just met him about a year ago. Finally put a face to a name, yeah. and, and his talent is just incredible. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of Navajo jewelry artists, mm -hmm. and he is one of the top five artists. Wow. Wow, and he's right here on Spectrum, and you're getting to meet him. Isn't that awesome? So that tell us about the process, because those bracelets are unfinished, I heard. Uh, these are yeah. unfinished. This is a, 
it started off like this, and then when I'm when I'm gonna shape it, I I heat them up mm -hmm. so so they get softer, so it's easier for me to shape. Mm -hmm. Do you have to use gloves, or do you just you, do, you uh -huh. do you use gloves to shape it, or you no, just use I, your bare hands? My bare hands, and I just have uh, these these are uh, pipes that okay. you know I accumulated for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, all my silversmithing days and. My friends just gave me these pipes, and that's what I use for, wow. you know, to shaping, shaping braces like this, and then everything, you know, everything I do. And so the the ones that we're we're looking at that are a little more finished, they kind of have a shine to them. And you said that the ones that are unfinished, obviously, they don't quite have the shine yet. So how does the the shine come about? Is that something that you have to uh, polish it out? Yeah, you have to oh, okay. polish it out after yeah, that's a lot of work. after you. Uh, after you dip this in uh, acid, mm -hmm. spheric acid, I think it's called spherix, yeah. And you dip it in there and then it comes out white. Okay. Like, it takes off all the, the this, you know, like, mm -hmm. the, the spherk, work, burnt right. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it comes out white. I should have brought one. But, you know, it comes out. <laughs> we take your word for it. It comes out white. <laughs> it comes out white, and then after that, that's when you start polishing it. Wow. With the, you know, like you barely, you take off some of the mm -hmm. the lines that are on there, and then the heat scale uh -huh. that's left behind from heating. And so, yeah, and you just work it and, and polish it until you get it to where you want it to be. Yes. You, uh, have, like you mentioned earlier, you've made some interesting things over time. What would you say was your greatest accomplishment? You look at back over 30 years, greatest achievement, say that was one, man, I was excited about it. I think about it often. Uh, train fit. And you showed me a picture off. Oh, off did air. you see it? Uh, I didn't yeah, see yeah. It. and it was. You described it. Well, he likes being about it, what so about he's four or five feet it. long. And yeah, I think it's like yeah, about four feet wow. long. Beautiful. And, I mean, and, back then silver was a lot cheaper. Mm. Like you know, mm -hmm. like four to five dollars an ounce, and you know that's when that's when I, you know, I had the money for yeah. to build. Big, big pieces, and I built like four train sets. Uh, first one lives in Albuquerque at somebody's house uh -huh. here, uh -huh. and then another you one. You go to their house and see it. <laughs> That's a special deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and another one it went to West Virginia. Wow. The second one. Uh -huh. Then the third and fourth one, you know, Bill Richardson from mm -hmm. Richardson Trading, yeah. he bought them for me. Wow. So I built it for him. Oh my goodness! And they're made completely out of sterling silver. Mm -hmm. and that is interesting. Well, where can your jewelry be found? Where can uh, folks Rio, find it? Rio Grande. Mm -hmm. They can find find them at Rio Grande and you know the places. Okay. Well, where, tell us, Annie, about the location. Give us a, a, well, how, a, a can how can people you. find you? So we are at 1920 Central Avenue Southwest, right where Lomas and Central meet across from the Wendy's. Very mm -hmm. easy to find. We got brand new signs, mm -hmm. so you can spot us. They're nice, nice and bright. And um, like I said, you'll be in for a treat if you yes. come in, see our new setup. Yes. And you might walk in and see Sunshine there. He's there quite often. Whoa, so you could fun. come in and find him hanging out on the couch, yeah. uh, selling <laughs> his beautiful like, jewelry. <laughs> Meet one of the, so cool. the local stars. That would be really excellent. Well, It, it is truly a beautiful location and so many wonderful things to see it's kind of like it's overwhelming but in a great way because you're like oh my goodness beautiful things to see so I'd encourage you to stop by and visit them. would like to take you to the New Testament. Would you, would you go with me today to the book of Matthew 11th chapter? Jesus is talking, coming to the end of that chapter. I don't usually read from the King James, but let's do it. Let's go to the King James. Uh, if you are like me, I memorized King James, and when I can't find a verse, I have to go back to the King James to remember where to find it, and that's what I, I did today. So let's read verses 28 through 30. It says, come unto me, all of ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I, I thought about that passage today because, you know, most of the people that I'm talking to in our world are carrying a burden. We might say a yoke. Something that's, uh, that's, that they're, they're pulling along. You think really of a yoke, you think like of a yoke of oxen where they put the collar around that, that uh, ox or pair of oxen and they, they pull. And you know, I think a lot of us coming through the last few years with, with the, the struggles that came from the pandemic and inflation and, and, uh, and, and financial uh, struggles that have been a part of all of those seasons, isolation, depression, things that th those things become a yoke. But what does Jesus say? And I love his encouragement. He says, come unto me. That's the first thing. Don't do it alone. Come to me. And then he, he identifies the problem. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, when you are struggling, come to Jesus. And his promise is, and I will give you rest. That, that's a great blessing. I'll give you rest. I'll help you. If you'll ask, I will help you today. And then he reverses it. Now, I want you to understand, following Jesus is not always going to be easy. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find, you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Following Jesus is not going to be without burden, because Jesus says, pick up your cross daily and follow me. But it is nothing compared to the burden that you will carry doing it on your own, and doing it depending on your own strength. So my encouragement to you today is come to Jesus, look to Jesus, give him your burden, and allow him to give you help with the burdens of life. Have a blessed day today. Until next time, God bless you.